So, so for the people um, wondering about the Japanese, the Asian leagues, so what happens is they get one foreigner. They have a foreigner rule. You get one foreigner, and basically what they do, they got they have a whole nation filled with liberos, ball control. They pay a big guy. You usually see a big guy, or or not was it? It was named Kubiak on the outside for uh, Panasonic yeah. Panthers. He's a yeah, Polish outside. Point. I would I would I would just say like point scoring <laughs> people who can score. Yeah, 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 exactly. But they so do. Pay they that do. Guy. Hey guys, I hope you guys are enjoying this clip of If You Can't Handle the Heat. I'm here to inform you guys that we have plenty more juicy information and storytelling on the full episode. Make sure you click the link below. We're both on Apple Music and Spotify. It's easy. Click the link below. Bam. A lot more information coming your way. Now, let's get back to the magic. Yeah, they do get excited I mean, about I'm, some big boys. So, mostly, mostly big, <laughs> big uh, point scorers. So how many? How much money? Like, so they get one person. They're basically dumping out a crap ton of money. If you're like a big scorer, right? If you're getting paid top dollar, how much money do you think those guys are making a year? Well, the Japanese and Korean leagues are on a scale. So the way I, I think, it, and Mike, it might have to correct me. I think first year in the league, it starts at like three hundred thousand dollars plus any bonuses you make through championships. I think. I, I think, think that's right. There, I think especially for Korea, I think that sounds right. I wish and, I knew it, more, but yeah. Yeah, I think Japan's the same thing. I think they started like three hundred or three hundred fifty thousand a year, which is a ridiculous amount of money for volleyball for anybody who doesn't isn't sure about that. That's like a ridiculous amount of money. And and I I believe, oh maybe it's just China. I believe their season shorter, which is, is also like China has a short season, man. China's two China months. has a yeah. China has a really two short season. months. So when people are like, how much does this person make a year? It's like, well, he makes this, but he only freaking has to play for two months, and he gets to like come home and be in, on vacation or do what. Well, I mean, obviously not. The vacation, other thing but... you see a lot of Euros do is they'll go play China season. They'll make some of them are making close to a million dollars, and they'll sign a second contract in like right. an Italian club or Polish club, and they'll come back right. and play, or they'll go to the Middle East somewhere and make a ton of money. And so they're picking up like two yeah. contracts a year, which is ridiculous. Yeah, so, that's definitely a nice way to go about it. I know Kubiak is making a lot. I think uh, last year, this is all speculation because I, I have no idea. But last year, I heard he was making over a million. So good for him. The oh, Panasonic God. Panthers. Um, I so we'll get Matt back to Anderson is at Shanghai this year. I think he's making a million for two months of play. Yeah, it's that's insane. Not two months of play. It's just crazy, man. That's yeah, it's insane. Fun. It's easier when you have a family too. Like you have two months and you get to spend time with your family anywhere you want, yeah. especially when you got if a million was, dollars. If I was a big boy, I would eat, I would be up in China. I'd be speaking <laughs> Mandarin by the all time. types of Mandarin, be, Cantonese. Oh yeah. Um, I'd be so a we'll, China native. We'll we'll get back to the kind of the main clubs here, but when I I want to kind of slow down and kind of move back here for a second. So we're gonna put you in your guys' shoes about two years ago, or in my shoes are gonna be the end of the year here, right? Your season ends. You sign an agent, right? You're not allowed to talk to an agent. I mean, I'm not saying that everyone follows this. Like, I've heard definitely people, like big name players, will definitely be talking to agents before the season's over. Like, you kind of hear murmurings and whatnot. But the season finishes, you sign an agent. Now your agent has to go and find out. Now, it goes by position. I want to kind of go by position and how much each position, who's getting paid the most, who's getting paid the least. Also, I know, I definitely know who gets paid the least, and that's Libero's, and that's that's my that's my line of work right there. So they'll go by point scorers, right? So what happens is they're going to start at the lowest, bam. Libero's not going to score any points, so they're going to pay you the least. Um, the top point scores are usually the right side's international. Correct me if I'm wrong here. Usually no, it's the right yeah, side. Yeah, usually the right side's the getting paid points. the most. And then usually around the, the two outsides, unless you're lay on, then you're getting paid the most, you know. Um, and basically you're top. this year. Jeez, lay on? Yeah. That's nuts. I would I say that opposites, opposites are um, scoring the most points, but when you actually look around, I would say that it's outsides that are getting paid the most. All the top salaries, like Ingepath, Leon, Kubiak. True. But um, tradition, Leal, traditionally, traditionally. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know traditionally, but at least right now I would say the outsides are definitely making the most, and at least at the very top levels I would think. Because there's not too many crazy opposites where like Clay Stanley where – I mean there, are, there definitely is. 
I'd be interested to know what Sokolov is making at Kazan. Um, but in the world, there's the opposites. Don't get me wrong. There's some insane opposites, but I'd say the top five players in the world, m- most of them are outsides. Yeah. Good yeah. point. Even like Taylor Sander and um, Matt Anderson plays outside now. Like in Italy, he was playing outside. Um, so, yeah, I think a lot of the people making the most at the moment are, are outsides. Okay, so we got the lowest being liberos. We got, yeah, and and I we're know, not far behind you. Setters and so, yeah, and so middles. I was about to say, so middles and setters. Let's say if you're the best middle in the world, best setter in the world, who's getting paid more? Setter? Uh, for sh- setter, for sure. The guy who touches the ball. I mean, okay. <laughs> touches the ball in a sec. The top paid, I know the top paid setter this year in Italy is Giannelli. He's making 350 350,000. And I heard um, that Simone was making like almost close to that in Lube. But Simone, he Also, I, I, I am not the guy to be talking about this. I know nothing about this, but you're going to hear what I've heard and we're all going to be on the same page after this, so you can look forward to that. <laughs> Just all speculation. You hear what I hear <laughs> and maybe it becomes more true because we spread the rumor. <laughs> <laughs> so so once you're a solidified player, I mean, you're not getting thrown this. I mean, once you come out of college or you're a new player, typically you're not getting thrown this amount of money. So let's say if you're coming out of college, right, and your guy's position, if you get signed to like Germany and France, still really, really good clubs, you're making what? Like around 50, a little under 50,000 or something like that. I mean, how much? I mean, I would say a anywhere from number. 20 to 50. 20 to 50. And then how yeah. long does if it you're take a setter, for you? Yeah, if you're a setter and like you're probably in France or Germany, yeah. Now I know, I know, uh, like if you're like TJ, if you're like a, again a big point scorer, you get signed to Italy, you can make. A, he's, I mean, I think he's making a couple hundred thousand, if I'm if I'm not wrong, or around a hundred thousand. No, yeah, TJ TJ's contract's a lot higher than the rest of us. <laughs> it's a lot, yeah. a lot yeah. higher. Like combined, probably. Yeah. Still. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, I'm not, I'm not and, spotting him ever. Ever. <laughs> it's not like, hey, you know, I'll take care of this one. Maybe you'll take the next one. That is not <laughs> happening. So, so for Libero, you can make you. I mean, you can make your first year under ten thousand dollars for sure. Yeah. Uh, under ten? I have <laughs> yeah. no idea. I Dude, I know yeah, for a fact, that's very, especially with. I know for a fact, especially with awesome. coronavirus, I am gonna be. In the middle of nowhere <laughs> next year, making oh, like no yeah. money. But the, the the trip, the the experience will be gonna be so fun. Like I'm so excited. Oh, it for is it. making like no money. The, but dude, man, just so fun. It was fun. Just <laughs> the beginning of any journey is like those t- those grinding it out days are like that. Starting at the bottom is just so sweet. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. You'll never get <laughs> to makes, recreate yeah. that. It makes things w- like way sweeter once you. Yeah, and you look back at it and you realize that you were having a lot of fun too back then, like. Yeah. It's just how it works. It's not as serious. We're not as, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. You but just so you, you, you come out of college. So you come out of college and you're making like what thirty, fifty thousand dollars, and then and the next, or if you're a high point scorer, you can sign a pretty big contract. But again, as you, how long? Is it, I mean, people move up the charts, move the charts within two, three years. Sometimes, sometimes people they take longer than that. Now you're kind of a solidified player, and you're making a lot of money getting signed to those top deals and. Again, how it goes is libero. You're making the least. I heard, I know, Grabenikov and I heard Eric. They're making around like a hundred thousand dollars too, a year. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, those more than that. Yeah, yeah, those guys are legit. Wow. If I was, if I was, oh, if I was it. an owner of a club in Russia, I would sign both of those guys. They would be one of my foreigners. <laughs> it just makes so much sense. Like I could find point scorers in Russia. Like, it's like trying to find a libero in Japan. It's like. <laughs> yeah, I can find that. But dude, someone like Eric, you're not gonna find that. And that's true. That first touch is in Russia with guys that are bombing. Like yeah, that's point. that's where I exp- that's what makes sense to me at least. If dude, there's owners- a good chance just looking at Eric's roster that he's making more than some of his points, like some of the guys who are. Yeah, it could be score. true. Shout out to Eric yeah. out there. Represent the liberos. Yeah, guys, just Hell shows. Yeah. If you're, but I mean, Eric is something special. Yeah, he's. So. I mean, he's he's worth every every penny for sure. 
You know, you see yeah. he's, he's absolutely diming balls. He's um, more. Eric, just, just like, so again, Libero at the bottom. Then probably, then probably around middles or so. Or if you're a really good middle, you yeah, can be up there too. Yeah, middles or setters. And then it goes to your top point scorers, outside, right side. Typically, like you said, outside. the outside because they got to kind of do everything.